it's time for Judge Joe Brown. He's the real deal in the courtroom today. I agreed to watch her kids, and she didn't agree to pay. She's trifling if she thinks I owe her anything. A busy mom, a frustrated babysitter, and some high-strung children. Student Amber Hampton is suing her neighbor for unpaid babysitting fees. Defendant Melinda Campbell says the plaintiff failed to watch her children properly. Now, here's Judge Joe Brown. All right, so I've read this, and this troubles me because there's some things that are going on behind the scene that I'm going to touch on very lightly. But let's see. You can stand up. Come on over. Okay. You're in the military. This is your wife, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, tell me what the arrangement was that you had with the defendant here. Well, I um, put up these flyers when we, about a month after we moved there to um, just ask if anybody needed any temporary babysitting because I was out of school temporarily, just took a semester off because we just moved there, and I was just trying to do something to make okay, a little you're in money. school as a student, and you're in, what are you, E5? E5. E5. Yes, right. Your Honor. All right, Ms. Sonia, get that for me, would you? And I just put those up all over our complex. We okay. live in a gated community and with my number and stuff so that people could contact me if they needed me just for um, weekends if they wanted to go out with their spouse or, I mean, like for her, I babysat her kids when they got out of school for a couple hours until she got off work. Okay, it was a need temporary babysitter I can be of assistance I'm 22 year old pre-nursing student and military wife we just moved here and I'm taking a semester off from school I have taken various first aid and nursing courses etc etc the kind of blah, blah blah all right you got a response what kind of arrangement did you have with the defense um, she told me that she just needed me to watch her kids after they got off the how bus. many kids are we talking about two two uh -huh. how old are they Six and seven. Is that right? Yes, Sean. Six and seven. All right. Tell <laughs> me about what happened. Um, they would get off the bus and they would walk to my apartment. Sometimes I would meet them. She told me I didn't really need to meet them at the bus, that they knew their way. But a couple times I would be going down to check the mail or something and they would be messing with the gate or people would be stopping them in their cars because they were in the middle of the street. So, most so all the kids, I'm sorry, I have a problem with that because they walked with other kids from the bus. Sometimes. So excuse you never me. informed excuse me, me of that excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. See, you weren't there, you don't know. You're making an assumption. Now, keep going. Um, well, I gave it a, a couple days, just let them kind of see how they could do it. Um, they knew my, where my apartment was, and they would come. And then I, I had to go check the mail. So when I very first started walking up there, they were messing with the gate. What did they tell you? Um, they, they started coming towards me. They listened to me that time. And I said, you guys know you can't do that. You'll get your fingers caught or whatever. It wasn't a... I mean, it was a big deal, but it wasn't enough for me to say, No big deal, oh, that's one time. Yeah. yeah, so okay. they listened to me, and that was fine. And after that happened, I just, um, every once in a while, I would just go down there and check on them. They wouldn't know that I was coming just to see, you know, make sure they were okay. And I would, like, hide behind the car and scare them, you know, just have a little fun. Um, in other words, you're being watched. That My mother, yeah. uncle or two did that to me, you know, like, don't think nobody's looking at you. Yeah, exactly. Um, sometimes, well... They were good little kids, but sometimes they would be in the street and, you know, you'd have to tell them to get back on the sidewalk and stuff. That's not anything, I mean, I'm sure their mother knows that they don't always stay on the sidewalk like they're supposed to. They're little six and seven year old but kids. But she thinks they do. Well, they don't. No, I don't. I don't think that at all. How many weeks did you keep her children? I kept them for about um, maybe four or five weeks. Four or five Give weeks. Give or take a little, yeah. Did you have any rules about the provision of lunch? Yes. She was supposed to provide snacks because they would just get home from school. They would do their homework. Um, Very in elementary school. Yes. So what happens relative to these snacks and other things? Um, the first week that we had them, she supplied me with some, like, you know, little juiced cups and snacks and stuff that I could give them when they got out of school. And when I started running low, I'd tell her, you know, you need to get some juice, you need to get some of this, you need to get some of that. There were times when I told her and she waited three or four days, so they didn't have But there was any. times when I got off work and I went to pick them up that I, you know, wanted to attend to them and I didn't always have time to go to the store. If she didn't have time, she could have gave me the money and I could have did it. I offered. Just give me $10. Okay, oh, keep going. Stuff. Tell me what you told me in your complaint. Um, there were times when I would tell her that we were running low and she would wait three or four days. Yeah, we and got that. Them. You said that. Okay. She said she was too busy. She just had things. To... And then you so, said, well, she could have given me the money and I'd have dealt with it. Exactly. Okay. And you know. the times that, it didn't, that she didn't do it, I provided it for them. She said, oh, just give them water. They were at my house for four or five hours sometimes. But I'm they drink water when they're outside water. playing because it's hot outside. What about snacks? What about food? You think your kids don't need food for fun? You for act like hours? I never brought you anything, like they didn't have anything. There, was, there, there were, were days that you didn't bring stuff, days. 
But she said it's already she was too preoccupied. It wasn't like busy. I was too preoccupied. It was like that by the time I got home, I'd fix them dinner, put them in bed. I just, during my work time, I just did not have time during the day to go. It wasn't like I was just totally ignoring the situation. Then why didn't you give me cash? I could you never asked me, Amber. They're your kids. Why wouldn't you just give me the money and say, hey, I'm sorry, can you maybe go to the commissary and get them something? You didn't even ask because me. Because I did not want to take time out of your schedule. Because, you know, apparently that's But you'll take money thing. out of my pocket, but you won't take time out of my schedule. But you won't watch my kids when you're supposed to. Half the time, you didn't even know where they were at sometimes. Are you serious? Excuse you me. don't know where excuse your me. own kids excuse are Excuse me. At. Excuse oh. me. Excuse <laughs> me. Therein lies the problem that starts developing. What did your you... job is to watch them. That's what I paid you for, to know where they were at when I was not home. Here, let me ask you this. I said, um, I'm going to go to the park with them. No, you don't have to go to the, the park, park with them. The park was right there. Okay. I didn't want you to feel like you had to sit outside with them when they're old. There's they nowhere the else park. for them to go. They either go on their bike or they go to the park. Now, you just said that I don't know where they're at, and I offered to go to the park There was times I come to your house, and like, where they're like, oh, he's at a friend's house, too. I don't know. No, I would tell you the apartment number. Don't even. You I never gave me the apartment down. number. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. One of her kids came came in for something. I don't, I don't they really had know. They had a head injury, right? I don't babysit her anymore, and she came over because her mother did not put sunscreen on her. Why don't you do the math? And later today... He won a TV stereo for his car. Well, I needed one. So, I take a lot of trips, so I got to be able to watch it. When do you take a lot of trips? I take a lot of trips. I go places. It's Joe time after this. I'm Montel Williams. The Partnership for Prescription Assistance is traveling to all 50 states, making stops in more than 500 cities to help people pay for their medicine. The PPA has been terrific. It's really changed my life. Let me say right from the jump, this program is real. The help you can get is real. Thank you. If you need help, you don't have to wait for the bus to get on board. Just call 1-888-4PPA now to see if you may qualify. A trained specialist will help you apply. Just tell them the names of the medicine you take. You could get them free or nearly free. It has been a lifesaver for me in more ways than one. This past year, America's pharmaceutical companies gave away more than $5 billion worth of medicines to people in need. It really helped me out of a tough spot. So whether you live in a sunshine state or the land of the midnight sun, if you need help, just call 1-888-4PPA now. The Partnership for Prescription Assistance, on the road to helping you. This season, we're putting the passion back in prime time. We go, put the TV on, people, there's a new revolution. With all new episodes of two new shows every night. I don't want your apology, I want you out. First, a beautiful woman comes between two brothers in desire. I didn't do anything to her. Then, Bo Derek and Morgan Fairchild are bitter rivals in Fashion House. Are you threatening me again? My Network TV. Tonight, starting at 8 on My RDC. Bankruptcy attorney, John Orcutt. That new bankruptcy law? We figured it out. The truth is that you can do almost everything under the new law that you could do under the old law. No more bankruptcy? Not true. Too late to file bankruptcy? Not true. Got debt? Need help? Call us. The first visit is free. Call toll-free 1-888-610-2442. That's 1-888-610-2442. Or visit our website at billsbills.com. Call now. My RDC is your home for one-on-one. -on -one. Well, back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says she was new to her military base when the defendant took her up on an offer to babysit. She says it quickly became obvious the defendant's children were a little out of control. Let's listen in. You say eventually when spring break rolled around, uh, you got an inquiry from the defendant if you could reduce the fees to a flat rate. Is that right? Yes, it is. She came to me, told me that she could not afford to pay the $10 per hour because I was going to have them for almost the entire week for basically the entire day from early in the morning to late at night and she asked me if I could just come up with some kind of flat rate so that she could pay me. All right, now your previous agreement was the rate for two children was ten dollars per hour, is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Now what you reduced it to was a flat rate of two hundred and fifty for the week. Yes, and it would have been three hundred and sixty. And at that point in time she was already you say in the hole for about $45. Spring break came and went. You continued to keep her kids, and she didn't give you any money. Is that right? So exactly. Wrong. You she did not keep them past spring break. I didn't. I, had, I kept them you, on spring break. He says that you, you kept them for three days out of spring break. Three days because I had to go on emergency leave. You, took, you kept them for three days. Three days at seven, eight hours a day. Why don't you do the math? 
But you're sitting there saying that you kept them after the fact. You did not keep them I after that. Where does it say that I kept them after spring break? I didn't keep them at all after spring I break. I was getting to the point of after spring break came and went, I <laughs> kept her kids, and she uh, didn't give me any money. Melinda promised to pay, but always found a way not to give me any money. Although I no longer keep her kids, her daughter showed up at my doorstep just last week. Are you feel you, you, you feel like I don't watch it? How dare you sit there? You Melinda's say, I don't want kids them, are still running around our complex unsupervised. Wow, because I know where their friends are, and I know when they go to their I friends. I feel sorry for them. Now, they show really, up. my kids are that bad? You feel that bad for my kids? Like, they don't now, well, have... Well, oh, no, 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 hold you. on. We're getting into a point here that, that I get that. a little disturbed That's an about. Opinion. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. When did you last run in there? Uh, last time I saw Yana was about the first week of May. And uh, what was the problem? One of her kids came came in for something. I don't. I don't. They really had know a head now. injury, right? Yes, How'd Yana. she get hurt? She was playing in her room with her friends when she fell off her bed and hit the nightstand, the back of her head post. Just what I put a note down. A fall is going to be said to be the cause of this That's problem. That's exactly what happened, Your Honor. You see the girl show up at your house last week. Yep. She yeah, was. she informed me. She said she came for like what, sunscreen so what or something. What did she come over there for? Exactly. I don't babysit her anymore, and she came over because her mother did not put sunscreen on her. I didn't even. And when she got to my house, first of all, it's summertime in North Carolina. It's about 90 degrees. I know. First Outside. of all, she was well, there with my see. mom. Your mom wasn't with her. Now, what I am going to do to avoid embarrassment to your children and you is avoid getting into the rest of this about why your children for three and four hours after they get out of elementary school have been running around essentially unsupervised be in places where you don't realize they are because you don't think they're there and are starting to tell adults you can't tell me what to do now you have a problem and that fall uh, fell off the bed hit the head on the nightstand that's exactly what happened now now, something's preoccupying you. Your children responded to this discipline, order, and authority that was being provided for them. Your son from the plaintiff's husband here, who is a sergeant in the Army, and the plaintiff over here relative to your daughter. And just last week, she shows up. Please give me some help. And where is Mama? And you've got a disaster. So let's get this together. You're owed your money. Like I said, there are some disturbing things behind the scene. Enough said, 405 in the court cost. Thank you. This courtroom is now in recess. The defendant was pretty defensive about why she didn't provide snacks, why she didn't pay, and why her children's behavior was in question. The judge makes her pay the babysitter. Now, on to the next case. Please raise your right.